Right, now for something completely different. The Liberal Democrat conference is underway in Bournemouth this weekend. The party leader, Sir Ed Davey, has ruled out any election deal with Labour. The idea each party might stand aside in a constituency where the other one has a better chance of squeezing out the Tories. But could some form of power sharing still be on the cards after a general election? Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to the Scottish Lib Dem leader, Alex Cole Hamilton. Alex Cole Hamilton, um, conference season upon us again. This may be the last conference you have before an election. Some say it's going to come in the spring. Some even now saying it could be before the end of this year. W why would people vote Lib Dem, though, in the upcoming election when they can vote Labour and get the same policies? Well, we're here at our conference in Bournemouth in great spirits, Martin, coming as we do off the back of four historic by-election victories in this parliament from the Conservatives in blue wall seats. But our success is not limited to south of the border. At last council elections in Scotland, we increased our councillor base by almost a third, outperforming all opposition parties. It's clear that change is coming, both in London and in Edinburgh, and the Lib Dems are going to be part of what's next because people are gravitating to us because they recognise when you vote for a Lib Dem, you get get someone who'll fight for your community all year round, not just at election time, who'll tackle the cost of living emergency, who'll work to drive down those waiting lists, which see one in seven Scots on an NHS waiting list, uh, take the dodgy concrete out of our schools and get the sewage out of our rivers. Yeah, you see, the thing is, though, by-elections and local council elections, you can fight on local issues. Your big-ticket policies that you really need to have any success in a general election are... <sighs> a bit wishy-washy and watery at the moment, aren't they? I mean, what are they? What do you stand for these days? Well, Lib Dems are proudly in the left of centre of British politics. You know, we're internationalists. We care about Europe. We care about the climate emergency. We care about our kids' education and things like long COVID. You know, only... Only Liberal Democrats are leading the fight on these issues. Take, for example, Long Covid, the biggest mass disabling event since the First World War. And we are nowhere in Scotland. It is only my party that has done the running on this. Uh, but So we speak out for the people who are on the fringes of society, the people who are forgotten by the main parties, and we are coming back in force. But, but, you, do, but you do a lot of that, Alex Cole Hamilton. You speak out a lot on mental health, on rack concrete, as you say. You were you are banging the drum on this months and months before anybody else. There are loads of issues where you can say when this should, these issues become fashionable in politics. We've been talking about this for months, but it doesn't do you any good, does it? Because you're a party of virtually no significance, even in Holyrood. Oh, you're full of the joys of spring today, Martin. Listen, I am in great spirits about where we are as a party. People keep writing us off. They've written us off uh, since I first got into politics, but we keep coming back and advancing, and we have did so, like with those council elections um, in the spring of last year, where, again, you know, we outperformed expectations. We're going to do it again in Westminster. You know, we've got those four hardworking MPs um, in Scotland right now. We're certainly going to add to that total. We can see the SNP in a state of collapse. The Tory party is in collapse. There's no enthusiasm about voting for Labour. This isn't a 97 Blair moment. So door by door and street by street, people are coming back to the Liberal Democrats. They recognise that we're about localism, about a power surge to local authorities, giving um, the tools and the power and the money necessary to our local councils to read, start delivering services that people want mm. to see at a quality they want to see. It, and we care about that. So, you know, we, door by door and street by street, we're taking that message of positivity out across okay. Scotland and we are winning again. Is there not a fear, though, that that stuff kind of gets drowned out amongst the really big global issues that this thing's going to be fought on? And, and like, for example, right, you, there was an, an issue that you planted your flag in and you really stood for. You stood for Europe. You were the party of rejoin at the last election. You're not anymore. What happened to that? Well, it's, a, it's just a statement of reality, Martin. You know, I don't think that Europe would have us right now. And nobody believes we're going back into Europe this year or any time soon. But surprise, surprise, Liberal Democrats want to be back in Europe. Every Liberal Democrat wants to see... But, but if I'm a Scottish voter Scotland, that wants to be back in Europe, Europe, the SNP are the party that's offering me that, not the Liberal Democrats. You've lost this, haven't you? I think... I think that's absolutely for the birds, Martin. Nobody believes, A, that independence is coming, and even if it were, that we would get into the European Union for, for even a decade after that. So, no, it's pie in the sky. And the SNP are latent converts to the European cause. Remember, they spent more losing the Shetland by-election to the Liberal Democrats. But it doesn't matter they when they came on, the on board the to the European cause. Campaign. They're the ones that are offering a European uh, membership, they, and, you're, and you're not. And they're they saying they calculated. can have it. And by the way, you're saying no, no chance of a referendum anytime soon. 
Britain, if they're, give or take 50% of the population see independence as this country's future, if they can put a few, a few digits onto that, there's going to have to be a referendum, isn't there? Or are you going to deny them it again if they get up to 55, 56%? Nobody's talking about this anymore, Martin. I mean, people really, when you knock doors, are most concerned about how they're going to pay their bills or whether their kid's going to get seen in child and adolescent mental health services. Even for the most ardent independent supporters, A, they don't believe it's happening, and B, it's really not a priority for them. They have bigger fish to fry. And that's what Liberal Democrats will be taking uh, to the streets and to the doors at the next general election, because we care about what you care. Uh, uh, whether that's the cost of living emergency, whether that is the rack concrete in your schools, the sewage in your rivers, um, but also, I think, much bigger than that, internationalism. I'm the one of the only parliamentarians sanctioned by the Kremlin for what I've been saying on Ukraine. We need to take our role in this world seriously. Liberal Democrats believe in responsible global membership, but also working together, whether that's uh, pooling and sharing of resources in our United Kingdom, working closer with our English neighbours, or across Europe, because, my goodness, the existential threats we face in our boiling planet, in the fact that we might be living in the early days of a new sure. Cold War, command the need of course, for but you want to do that in isolationism. That's what Lib Dems outside, outside Europe. I mean, here, here's the situation: all the main opposition no. parties in Scotland, right, are are against joining the EU. They're again, they're they're pro union. Sixty percent of the population in Scotland, sixty-two percent, voted to remain. Are you not on the wrong side of this? You're mischaracterising my position. I'm a Liberal Democrat. Of course I would love to be back in the European Union, but I recognise that's not where we are. That's not the reality. It will take time. I mean, your, the European is back right now. But no, no, you will see in our manifesto that we have a clear commitment that where we want to be is Britain at the heart of a, a thriving European Union. But we recognise we are nowhere near that yet. There's a route map we need to follow. First of all, which means building bridges with Europe, whether that's um, on things like the Horizon Research Initiative, getting back into European medical research trials, those baby steps to re-establishing trust and cooperation. Um, of course, we're not anywhere near rejoining, but it doesn't mean to say that my heart isn't European, that my the hearts of my party members are ardently pro-European. Um, but I think your viewers would recognise uh, that we're a long way off that. And we, we recognise that we lost the referendum. But we'll spend the next years and um, decades, if needs be, persuading our fellow citizens of this United Kingdom that okay. our best um, future lies ahead of us right. within the European Union. Well, the next big persuasive exercise that you have in front of you is a general election, one would imagine. Ed Davey has said no electoral deals with Labour. We're not going to carve up constituencies to squeeze the Tories out. But if, if Labour as uh, many pollsters predict, uh, win this, but with a minority, then the great game starts, doesn't it? The negotiating and the horse trading over power. Um, that's the big moment for the Lib Dems, right? The, the ambition for coalition again, perhaps? Listen, we're not going to prejudge the outcome of an election before any vote has been cast. I bet you that's, um, you're talking about nothing else in the back rooms at this conference. I can, I can certainly rule out, as Ed has done, any pacts or deals um, in fighting an election. But listen, um, we, didn't, we don't get into politics just to become ministers, but we don't fear it either. You know, I mean, I, I didn't get into politics just to carp from the sidelines. With power, you can make big and important liberal changes to people's lives. But you don't need to hold power to wield well, like power. Scrapping, Look at, for example, like Edinburgh City Council. Well, like scrapping your pledges well, on it, tuition fees. I mean, it didn't work well for you last time, did it? <laughs> Well, listen, we, we obviously apologise for that and um, been, well, I think over time, people have understood why we did the deals that we did at, those, at that time. But listen, it was a long time ago now, a lot of water under the bridge. Uh, but it's a really important uh, thing to stand for election and, and to have a hope of actually okay. delivering change for people. I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with that. The final thing I'd say on that is this, is if you look at City of Edinburgh Council, we're not an administration, um, but we are, are actually in the driving seat because um, the Labour Party need to come to us before they make decisions. So look, you don't need to hold power to wield power. And I'm not frightened of wielding power because you can change people's lives for the better when you've got it. All right. Well, listen, uh, a long way to go uh, and a lot more to be discussed between now and then. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the conference. Alex Cole-Hamilton, many thanks indeed for being with us this morning.